Hello, Ben here from CSL. Today we're going to discuss the factions of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, something I've already written about over on clickshootloot.com. But for those who don't like to read, this video is for you. Now, the story of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord is set hundreds of years before the events of Mountain Blade Warband, the last game in the Mountain Blade series, where in Warband we had the Swadians, the Vagars, the Rodoks, the Nords, the Serenid Sultanate, and the Kurgit Khanate. In Bannerlord, we have the Vlandians, the Sturgians, the Batanians, the Asurai, the the Kuzate Khanate and the Kalradic Empire, which itself is divided into three separate factions, the Northern Empire, the Southern Empire, and the Western Empire. Where we had six factions in Warband, we now have eight factions in Bannerlord. Taking a look at this screen cap of Kalradia posted on Reddit in August of 2018, you can see the current starting zones for each faction. The named locations you can see are towns, each which have their own villages and castles not currently visible. In Warband, Kalradia had 22 towns, and looking at this map of Bannerlord, Lord, we can see that there are way more than 22 towns, suggesting that the map is much much bigger. The Bannerlord map could have changed since this photo was taken, but per the above, we can see Sturgia in blue at the top, Batania in green, Landia in red on the west coast, Asurai in orange to the south, and Kuzay in teal to the east. In the center of the map, we have the Empire, which itself is split into three factions, the Northern Empire in light purple, the Southern Empire in dark purple, and the Western Empire in maroon. Each major faction is also made up of a collection of clans, all with their own diplomatic power struggles, and each faction region has their own minor factions, which are groups made up of mercenaries, nomads, and outlaw leagues that have their own agendas that aren't part of the struggle for power. You can ally these minor factions or go to war with them, whatever you choose. First up is Sturgia. Most comparable to the Nords from Mountain Blade Warband, Sturgia holds the north of Calradia. The Sturgians are based on medieval Slavic communities from the regions of Belarus and Ukraine, with leaders inspired by the likes of Vladimir the Great. Sturgians are hard people from harsh lands that are all too familiar with the ways of war. They specialize in disciplined infantry and close quarter combat utilizing the shield wall. For the trading man, venturing into Sturgian lands will net you wild honey, bog iron, and fur. Sturgia fits the player who wants to slash and burn, the player who wants to raid towns with a two-handed war axe under a raven banner with ice clinging to their beard. Now I'm not going to go over the clans for these factions because I literally cannot pronounce their names, but if you head on over to clickshootloot.com and go to the factions article, you can see a list of clans for each faction. Now some of the Sturgian minor factions that we've seen include the Skolder Broda, I think that's how you pronounce it. They're a mercenary group. And then you got the Sons of the Forest, a slash and burn nomadic tribe. Some of the Sturgian units we've seen include the Sturgian Horsemen, Footmen, Veteran Footmen, Horse Raider, and Bowmen. There are many more units we haven't seen for the Sturgians. However, it seems like the Horse Raider unit type might be Sturgian specific. Not sure about that. Whereas the Horsemen, Footmen, and Bowmen unit types seem to be available to all factions. Next up, we got Batania. Not holding many similarities to any previous warband faction, the Batanians are inspired by Celtic tribes throughout history. They are cunning, poetic, and not afraid to show a little flair, utilizing tattoos and war paint to scare their foes. However, the Batanians also have a nomadic warrior side, preferring the safety of the woods, living off the land, and stealing from anyone who crosses their path. Mischief runs through the Batanians' blood. Specializing in the longbow and night raids, Batania fits any player who wants to rain down arrows from afar or slip into town stealing goods and cattle in the dead of night. Afterwards, the good Batanian will come to town and drink a pint at the tavern while writing songs about their accomplishments. The one minor faction we've encountered for the Batanians are the Wolfskins, young warriors who live a nomad's life in the woods eating raw meat and wearing, well, the skins of wolves, of course. For Batania, we've seen many different unit types featured in videos, including the Batanian Scout, Archer, Longbowmen, Yeoman Longbowmen, Clansmen, Footmen, Infantrymen, Trained Infantrymen, Heavy Infantrymen, and Horsemen. In more recent videos, we've seen unit types such as Axemen, Falksmen, Ufheldnar, Hunters, and Fian. I think I got those right. Not sure if these new units are updated names for older unit types such as the standard infantrymen, or if they are new units specific to the battalion on top of the other units we've seen. Next up we got Vlandia. Preceding the kingdom of Swadia from Mountain Blade Warband, the Vlandians hail from the west of Calradia. Originally a group of mercenaries made up from different peoples from faraway lands, Vlandia was inspired by the feudal states of medieval Europe. They specialize in disciplined knights on a heavy horse, running down their enemies with sharpened lance. Their greed for land has no bounds, which is why they occupy occupy more of the map than any one faction. Not sure if this is still true, but it was at one point in development. However, this expansionist mentality comes with a price. The Vlandians are plagued with internal conflict. The Vlandians fit a player who wants to charge 
the enemy on heavy horse, piercing skulls with a sharpened lance, or sitting atop the walls of a massive medieval castle, raining crossbow bolts into the eyes of their attackers. Minor factions for the Vlandians include the Company of the Golden Boar, who live a life of constant warfare, living off mercenary contracts. You'll also encounter the Brotherhood of the Woods, a group of peasants who started robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. The Brotherhood of the Woods have since fallen into corruption, stealing and killing to survive. Unit types for the Vlandians include the Vlandian Archer, Sharpshooter, Recruit, Militiaman, Infantryman, Veteran Infantryman, Men-at-Arms, Veteran Men-at-Arms, Trainee Horseman, Light Horseman, Heavy Horseman, and the Sergeant. Even though I haven't seen it, I'm sure the Vlandians, like the Swadians that succeed them, also have the Vlandian Knight. Laying claim to the deserts of the south are the ancestors of the Serenids, the Asari. Based on the Arab tribes of the 7th century, the Asari are made up of a collection of tribes that banded together to fight the Empire and are relatively balanced when it comes to warfare. Adhering to no specific specialty, an Asari army will have a good balance of cavalry and infantry. Although one would be wise to take note, Asari lands boast some of the finest horses in all of Kelradia. The Asari Asari are an oasis people who cherish flexibility and adaptability. Whether it's slinging javelins from light horse or charging the enemy with heavy infantry, the desert is yours. What will you make of it? Also, the Asari can enlist camel cavalry, which get a speed and maneuverability boost in the desert. Enough said. Minor factions for the Asari include the Jawal, a nomadic tribe, and the Gilman, a band of slave warriors. For Asari, the units we've seen include the Asari swordsmen, footmen, infantrymen, archer, trained archer, master archer, light cavalry, and cavalry. I'm sure there are a host of other Asari unit types we have yet to see, including the highly anticipated Camel Cavalry. Next up is the Kuzate Khanate, lying far to the east, a step horde made up of separate tribes, including the ancestors of the Kurgut tribe from Mountain Blade Warband. These horse clans lay claim to the Great Plains and draw inspiration from the step hordes of Asia, with leaders inspired by the likes of Genghis Khan. They specialize in horse archers, skirmishing their foes from afar. The Kuzates make a good fit for a strategic player who favors mobility over the claustrophobic hack and slash free for all that is medieval warfare. The only minor faction we've seen for the Kuzates are the Karakurgits, a clan who refused to submit to one leader, preferring the old ways of full clan autonomy. For the Kuzate Khanate, we've seen Kuzate Spearmen, Veteran Spearmen, Guards, Archers, Veteran Archers, Marksmen, Raiders, Lancers, Horse Archers, Veteran Horse Archers, and the Heavy Horse Archer. As you can tell, the Khanate specialize in Horse Archers. They also seem to employ Spearmen rather than Infantrymen. In some newer footage, we've also seen the unit types of Step Footmen, Step Spears, Dismounted Bowmen, Tribal Horsemen and the Khan's Guard. No telling whether these are new unit types or if they're updated names for existing unit types. Finally, we've got the Empire. Now, at the start of the game, the Empire is engaged in a brutal civil war with three factions vying for power, the Northern Empire, the Southern Empire, and the Western Empire. Based on the Byzantines from ancient history, the Empire seemed to resemble the Vlandians the most, specializing in heavy infantry and cavalry. However, where the Vlandians' tactic is to mow down the enemy with charge after charge of heavy horse, the Empire requires a more tactical, opportunistic approach. Unlike the Vlandian heavy horse, whose knights carry shields and one-handed lances, the Empire heavy cavalry men carry large two-handed lances and no shields. This leaves them open to volleys of arrows during a charge. However, if you're tactical about your approach and don't leave your horse units open to range fire, you can decimate your foes. Another thing that sets the Empire apart is they're focused on combined arms. Anything you need to make the perfect army you can find in the Empire. Medium and light cavalry, spearmen, skirmishers, mercenaries, they have it all. One way or another, you eventually must conquer the Empire. Will you conquer it from the outside as one of the other factions, or will you start from within and pacify it? Minor factions for the Empire we've seen include the Embers of the Flame, which we don't know much about, but we've also seen the Hidden Hand, who are a mafia-type group that work with authorities to squash unrest, but also have their hand, no pun intended, deep in the criminal underworld. We've also encountered a mercenary group called the Legion of the Betrayed, who are former soldiers who pretty much hate the way the Empire is run these days and want to go back to the old ways. Units for the Empire we've seen include the Imperial Bowmen, Skirmishers, Heavy Archers, Cataphracts, Heavy Horsemen, Horse Archers, Infantrymen, Light Infantrymen, Trained Infantrymen, Veteran Infantrymen, men, legionaries, and sergeant crossbowmen. In some newer footage, we've seen names such as Velites, Equites, and Palatine Archers. While many of these unit types we've seen in other factions, the Cataphracts, Legionaries, Velites, Equites, and Palatine Archers seem to be Empire-specific. Thank you for watching. Be sure to head on over to clickshootloot.com for all your latest PC gaming news. Give us a like and a subscribe, and how about some Bannerlord Wens in the chat? Cheers.